Welcome to the Woman Makes Things Happen show. My name is Agnes van Rijn, and I'm the host and founder of the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show. I'm also a personal branding strategist, a mindset coach, as well as an organization expert mm -hmm. to professional women who want to reach their full potential in life and in business, but without giving up who they are and what's important to them. Today, at the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show, it's my privilege to be interviewing Emma Jane Taylor. Emma Jane is a mentor and fitness coach with over 20 years experience in the industry. She is the founder and owner of Nutritious Works, Stage Work Performing Arts School, and Ocean Works Retreats. She is also a TV presenter for That's TV and the author of Don't Hold Back, and she also writes the Feel Good column for the Henley Standard. Prior to being in fitness, Emma Jane was a professional dancer. She has performed with cabaret troupes in the West End TV fashion shows, and she continues to choreograph and produce shows as and where she can. Welcome to the Woman Makes Things Happen show, Emma Jane. Wow, that's quite a list. How are you? <laughs> yeah, hi, Anya. It's nice to see you. Uh, yeah, what a list. I mean, listening to you say it back, I'm like, really? Do I do all that? <laughs> I wonder, do you have 24 hours in a day? <laughs> yeah, I know. I have lists coming out of my ears and schedules coming out of my ears. So uh, the only way I can get things done, really. <laughs> okay, so obviously I know a little more about you, but our viewers and listeners don't. So uh, tell us more about you. Okay, so Agnes, uh, I have been a very passionate performer, dancer throughout my years. And uh, all through my childhood, I danced, I ran around, I sang, I just wanted to be out there performing. Uh, as, a, as a young child, I unfortunately was abused sexually. And my parents d divorced at a young age, which didn't really affect me. It was my father abandoning me when I was about 11 years old that then really sort of rocked my world. Um, I still wanted to dance though, that was my real, that was the thing I held on to, it was the thing that gave me happiness and gave me security and gave me the safety mm -hmm. of being in an environment that you just could express yourself. Um, unfortunately when my father abandoned me, I guess is the right word to, to say, I was around 11 years old, I then fell into another abusive sexual relationship for a couple of years. I was just a bit broken, I didn't know really where I was going. Yeah. And fell fell apart I suppose you know so by the time I was 16 I had um, been abused mentally and physically I had abused my body through alcohol and drugs not always my own doing people were people were feeding me uh, and you kind of go with it when you're feeling a bit lost and a little bit out of control um, when I got to around 19 things started changing because I started really understanding what had happened to me in my yeah. life and I decided to just make some changes. And I think I started my therapy when I was around 21, 22 years old. When I started to realize it was okay, it was really scary telling somebody my story for the first time because I'd, I'd held on to it. You had, you had kept it for yourself. Well, you, you get scared. You get scared because you think, is anyone going to believe you? You know, yeah. is it, uh, you know, am I just feeling sorry for myself? But the reality is, no, you're not. You know, from nine years old until... 21 22 so we're talking 13 years later I was really in a muddle I knew I wanted to dance and that was giving me my happiness but I was really confused I was really I guess I was really messed up mm -hmm. uh, I hid behind people I put all this invisible blanket over my head because then it was easy to ignore everything going on around me but when I started my therapy at 22 my world started to change and I started to think it was okay, you know, and this isn't so bad. I can talk about it. I don't need to lean on all these other people. I can do this on my own. So my world started changing. Uh, I got, I moved away from some of the circles of people in my life, not because they were bad people, because I just needed to move away from them because yeah. they were, they were, they were, they were my security blanket. And one night I was working in a bar and I remember saying, this guy saying to me, so uh, what do you want to do with your life? I said, oh, do you know what? I really want to dance. He said, but you'll never dance. He didn't know any of my problems. He said, you'll never, you'll never get out there and dance because you're a party animal. And I thought, my goodness, that's what people think. You know, they have no idea on why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. And he thought I was this crazy party animal. I'm not saying I didn't have a good time, but it was all because of insecurities, low yeah. self being vulnerabilities most days I woke up feeling just sick and nervous I was bulimic as a teenager 
Uh, and it was a very d difficult time. So that was a real turning point for me. I stopped uh, alcohol. I stopped socializing wow. with people. With. Um, and then I started my business in performing arts, stage works performing arts school when I was 23, 24. I had been performing as a cabaret dancer as well and in the West End and various other um, roles because that was something I really, really enjoyed. And thank goodness I had that because without that, that was my little bit that kept me a little bit sane. When I was 24, I set up my business and then it sort of just snowballed from there, really. So when uh, 24, what, what, what is the business you set up then? So Stageworks Performing Arts School. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I took over the goodwill of a company that was running in Henley-on-Thames and I developed it and grew it to where we are today. So we've got four schools in the local areas and we have an extension of Performing Arts School. We have exam-based drama school. We have an exam-based dance, ballet and tap school. We have um, a junior department, which is just for young children aged three plus to come and experience without exams or performances. We have an agency for children who want to perform oh. personally. And um, we've, had, we've had some children, we've had a child on Broadway. We've had children in television and West End. And it's developed and developed and developed. So I've now put adults in with that because I then launched a fitness company. Um, so I do adults and dance in tap and jazz and ballet. And I put it all under one roof. And we have a couple of hundred, maybe 400 students there now. Under wow, the that's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, so that on its own has been a massive feat. And I did a lot of the physical work, but knew if I wanted to develop the country, I, uh, the company, I couldn't continue um, uh, doing all the physical work. So I've had to step back and had to get a team in. And the team now runs Stageworks. Yeah. I'm, I'm management. I, I work with a management team to keep it smooth, smooth running and uh, keep the balls juggling as they should be in the air. Wow, and that's only one piece. <laughs> that's only so, one piece. So, so Emma Jane, let's let's rewind a little bit um, because quite often, uh, as you well know, um, when life has stood in the way, one way or the other, um, we're very easily uh, in this place where we don't see any way out, uh, assuming we want to admit all of that to ourselves. Um, so you went into psychotherapy, um, you had, and it was, it's obvious when you're speaking that, that you have that light in your eyes immediately when you start talking about dancing. Every time you mention it, your, your face goes, wow. <laughs> but uh, so, so you were holding on something, but what would you say to women who are in that space but may not necessarily have something to hold on to? Is there any form of advice that you could give them I think we all need to find a passion in life everyone has a passion we just sometimes I mean I was lucky I knew what mine was yeah uh, but a lot of women who will maybe be in that space where you just feel everything you feel lost you feel lost you don't feel there's any hope but deep down you you have to try and find something that you love whether it be drawing walking writing dancing cycling there is something for everybody out there and don't doubt yourself. Never doubt yourself. Never think that you're a failure or you're a victim. It's all part of who you are, or where you are, and how you move forward. I've never thought of myself as a victim because I think if I felt, if I ever thought of myself as a victim, I'd have never got on. And I needed to get on in life. And I yeah. needed to understand this has happened to me. It's not great, but it happened to me and gave me the strength to be the woman I am today. And that's been something that I, I have felt has given me confidence. And yeah, I, I've I'm, also I'm let go fear. I'm completely with you. Um, so to find your passion definitely is a very good advice. That's what I always start with my clients the, when they don't know yet. Um, but what has made a difference in my life definitely uh, is the day that I decided that I was not a victim. I, I've spent my life uh, finding excuses in others and circumstances. Uh, yeah. The day things really started changing is when I decided to, to charge and look for the answers inside and not outside of me. So I'm, I'm fully with you there. Yeah. I think you need to turn yourself inside out. Yeah. And that's how I did. I went to psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, Reiki, acupuncture. I mean, I did, I did an A to Z of therapy and I still, uh, I, I still go to therapy if I feel I need it. Not because I need to clear up the past. I need to keep myself 
strong and moving forward. Yeah. There isn't anything wrong with that. So turn yourself inside out, keep your brain focusing forward, and then you will feel so much confident, much more confident with yourself and the world that you're living in. Mm. So very good advice, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, let's go back to your business. So what on earth made you decide all of a sudden that you needed to go into fitness as well? Fitness. So when I set up the performing arts school and I danced and I taught and I did everything else, I also realized I couldn't do dancing all the rest of my life. You know, I had to find something else that had synergy and I always loved fitness. So I then went off and became a personal trainer and I trained as uh, all sorts of different uh, um, genres into circuit training, exercise to music, step aerobics, boot camp style. And I then did a whole array of exercise classes throughout the week. So I was doing my stage work, so I was doing my fitness classes. And I kind of, as I went on with that and stage works needed me less and less physically, I was needed more and more physically with my fitness stuff. Yeah. So I became management with stage works, physically with nutritious works, and I realized I couldn't, again, go on as I was without a team behind me. So then I introduced a membership and created a, a, a schedule across a week with six other um, staff. And between us, we work it out. We have about 26 classes running every week for adults. Mm -hmm. I, do, I do maybe three or four of those now, and the girls do all the rest, and I do all the management for that. I do body transformations and a lot of online work with clients. So now we have two companies running, very, very busy, one with children, one with adults, one in dance, one in fitness. But it's, it's an energy that I really, really love. And I have an amazing team of people. I, I thank them every week for the hard work and support that they put into the company because I think it's really important to support your team yeah. and support your staff and make them realize that they are integral to your business, which my girls are. And here I am now, two businesses later. And that's, and that's still not enough. <laughs> no, that's still not enough, apparently. <laughs> so before, before we move into uh, the rest of your activities, I think that there's an, one other area that probably is interesting for um, viewers and listeners to have your tips is, how do you so how do you get organized for all of that so obviously you are outsourcing you are delegating you you are building yeah. a team and and you know how to um how to motivate the team by by giving them positive feedback etc and and being grateful for what they do but is there any other tip that you would give to our uh, viewers as uh, to when it oh, comes oh. to juggling multiple yeah. agendas <laughs> So all of you, all that you've just said, absolutely. And then have a tight schedule. So on a Mon Monday morning for me is my admin day. And I have, I have an A to Z of lists of things that I need to tick off. So whether it be speaking to my admin staff, whether it be speaking to my team, whether it be emailing my clients, whether it be making sure that I've written my um, column for the newspaper or I've got my interview set up for my TV work. Everything is there and it's, nothing is missed off that list. So on a Monday, I go through it and I could probably could do 10 hours off this work that day. Mm -hmm. But once I get all of that ticked off and it's the same schedule for the following week. And if I need to add to it, we add to it. But I, I have a printout and that's how it works. And then before I go to bed every night, I write my list of what I have to do the next day. Yeah. So before I go to bed, I've dumped it. I know I've got to be up at five. I've got to keep your up. mind. Absolutely. This morning I started at six. So I was up, at, you know, so I know exactly what I'm doing and it's, you know, so you're clear and you're not worrying or thinking where the hell am I going next? It's all there written for you. So be organized with a schedule of things to do. And before you go to bed, write a note of what you have to do the next day. So obviously one of my areas of expertise being uh, organization, this is all music to my ears. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> so I get a gold star. Sorry. Have I got a gold star for that? Yes, you do. <laughs> Absolutely. No, but I think what's interesting and what, what you're saying uh, is underlying that is that you're focused and, and you have discipline and you stick to it. Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, a lot of women in particular are very, very easily sidetracked. Um, mm -hmm. And then they wonder why three hours later they are still not doing what they had meant to do when they were starting yes absolutely so um i'm conscious of time so how how did you start a tv presentation oh so about two and a half years ago 
I was invited onto the TV Oxford to talk about, they invited me as a guest to talk about my work. So they did a whole show on me with my fitness, my nutrition, my dancing and my stage works. After the show, I got talking to uh, one of the directors there and she said, oh, you know, it'd be really interesting maybe if we could talk to you about doing some more work, about maybe getting a show put together. Anyway, then they called me in to cover someone on maternity leave for four weeks. And then by the end of those four weeks, I had my own show, Wellbeing Show. And here I am two and a half years later presenting the Wellbeing Show. It's a great format. It's a great um, platform for women in, or women and men, actually, in the well-being industry it doesn't matter it could be mental or physical work that yeah, you do. Yeah. it's bringing good goodness to people's lives and then we do a, a show each week I, I video i record two shows a week yeah and then they go out throughout the year so it's a great platform for me i love it <laughs> amazing so that means a few more people as a team <laughs> yeah so then i have a pa who works for me on that she works with me helping me get my guests together and she'll I'll just give her a brief on what I what I really want she'll bring guests to my you know email me who she thinks and then if they work we okay so she finds them for you we work yeah we work together but she quite often will find them herself yeah. and as if that's not enough you've written a book I'm writing a book yeah I'm writing a book called don't hold back now this is a motivational book based on my story on life and how I've got through what I've got through and where I've got to today you know I know that every story is different um, and, you know, I, I don't claim to know everything. I just know what's worked for me yeah. from a nine year old child to a 40 something woman. So uh, I know that in the last however many 30 years, I have turned my life around. I've understood. I've forgiven lots of people. I forgive everybody. Yeah. Any, anybody who's brought bad or unhappiness or negativity to my life, I let them go because life's too short to hold on and be bitter. So it's how I turn my life around and I, you know, it's, it's, it's written, it needs to be edited and then it's out there. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you'll have to uh, give me some lessons on how to get a book started because I definitely have a book in me for quite a long time already. <laughs> you know what? I think everybody has a book in them. Yeah, yeah of course. We all, we all, I mean, li life is all about stories. Absolutely. And we should be sharing that. Yeah. Uh, not being, I've been too scared to write this book. Because, like we were saying earlier, I was too worried about how it would be interpreted. But yeah. now I think it's okay. It's okay. This is my story. Everyone has a story. And I'm going to help others, I hope, make them feel like they can. Yeah, and I always say, if I, if I can help change the life of one person, that, that would already be amazing. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's imagine when we can start sharing, uh, which is what I'm doing with this video interview series also. It's, um, great. It's, it's all about inspiring other women to uh, to go after their dreams or, or reinvent themselves do yeah. you have any other plans <laughs> other plans so i've just launched um a retreat overseas oh yes i with, forgot the retreat <laughs> with a partner of mine so it's a dream of mine to bring uh people together and take them overseas or even into the uk for maybe three days four days i've just done one in spain for a week yeah, you're, you're just back huh yeah, I'm just back from Spain and we did a week out there and it was amazing. You know, we bought, it's a mind, body, soul retreat. So we bring our guests back with their mental and physical fitness and we inject the fun in it. So they become aware it's okay to do fitness, mental fitness and have fun and rest because that's all part of making us function correctly. Yeah. So my guests, my clients that came last week lost on average five pounds in one week which is brilliant for them. Yeah. We did, I did lots of mentoring with them throughout the week. So I turned you know, all their negatives into positives. I've sent them away and now I'm going to work with them in the UK to make sure they keep moving forward. So yeah, so that's been a, a great experience and something I've really enjoyed doing and will hope to continue building the business. Excellent. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm getting conscious of time. Emma Jane, where can people find you? Because with all these things, what is the central point where people can find you? So there, I have a web page, which is www.emmajanetaylor.co.uk. You'll find me on Facebook, Emma Jane Taylor, also known as the Inspirational Mentor. And you can find me on Instagram at the Inspirational Mentor. And I'm on Twitter as EJ the Mentor. And I suppose um, that all these links can be found on your website anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all there. And um, everything that you need is there. Or you can email us and we can send you all the details of everything that we do. 
Excellent. Emma Jane, thank you so much for your time. We, we could continue chatting for We could talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank, you, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and so for the viewers and the listeners, regardless at what stage you are in your life, whether it's about breaking your self-imposed glass <coughs> ceiling, whether it's about turning your passion into a business, where it, it is about turning your average business into a visible brand, or whether it is about working on your business and no longer in it, and Emma, Emma Jane could definitely help you with that as well, um, mm -hmm. you can book yourself a discovery consultation with me on my website, and that is agnesvanrijn.com, A-N-Y-E-N. S V A N R H I J N dot com. Thank you so much and see you in the next interview. Bye.